Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Sainato with Real Progressives. Uh, tonight we have a special guest. Uh, Amy Valella is running for Congress in Nevada's 4th Congressional District. Uh, and we have her on this evening to discuss uh, the BuzzFeed report on Friday that uh, the, the incumbent Congressman Ruben Kuhn, uh, who is a Democrat, uh, uh, allegedly uh, a staffer who worked uh, for him between December 2015 to April 2016, uh, quit because he was constantly sexually harassing her. Uh, he was grabby. He kept propositioning her. Uh, and in, in the wake of that, the DCC chair has called on him to resign. Nancy Pelosi has echoed those calls. Uh, and, you know, other Democrats have called out QN for uh, this allegation. So, Amy, what was I know you put out a statement, but what was your uh, response to that uh, that BuzzFeed report? Yeah, I was really disappointed. Um, we have a lot of issues that our, our representatives need to be addressing in Congress and in the Senate that to take advantage of the power that you hold um, and use it in such a way that affects other people, that was very disheartening for me to hear. Um, when we elect representatives um, and to, to represent the constituents, we are putting a lot of faith and trust that they're going to do the will of the people and make sure they're looking out for their constituency. So it was very disheartening to me to, to hear um, that this was happening in our state of Nevada. And um, I know Lucy Flores, uh, you know, basically endorsed you in the, in the wake uh, of those allegations. So uh, what, what has been the response from uh, you know, other Democrats have uh, has have people reached out to you? Have local media reached out to you? I mean, what's been the response in the past, you know, 24 to 48 hours uh, since this news has really broke? Uh, and, and what's been the response in your district? So I've gotten a, a lot of support. Um, even before the are definitely, um, you know, really showing a lot of support, especially here in the back. It, it has opened up um, the opportunity for people to look at another um, candidate and to do so without um, uh, having a sense of, you know, they're betraying a, a sitting congressperson. But more, more importantly, I think people are ready um, to be very supportive of women in Congress um, and women who are strong and willing to, to you know, really represent their constituents. Um, I think that we need to see more women in Congress and in the Senate to understand what's at stake that are taking care of families that are, you know, in the business world dealing with these type of situations. Um, it's important that they have representation and we have more representation in Congress and in the Senate. And um, for, for some of our viewers who haven't, um, aren't familiar with your campaign, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your background? You know, you're, you know, a really interesting story that, uh, you know, I've written about and you've, uh, you've been on uh, the show to, to discuss a little bit. But can you, uh, you know, briefly uh, talk about your background and what inspired you to run for Congress? Sure. You know, I, a lot, most people know me. Um, most specifically for my work in healthcare. But um, for those that have been following my campaign, they would realize that I am really about um, social, economic, LGBTQ, and racial justice and, and uh, environmental justice, because all of these things are intersectional. We need representation that touches and represents us on all those different levels in order to even have true healthcare justice. Um, you know, it, my, 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 you know, um, advocacies began with on the heel of my daughter's death. Um, and that was a tough period. And initially, you know, I was, um, a healthcare advocate, um, advocating for Medicare for all. Um, but as a candidate, there are so many different issues that we need to be concentrating on in our legislative body because they're affecting a vast majority of Americans. There's a lot of Americans that are hurting, that are in pain, and they need real representation. 
And I, I, I've had a very interesting life in that I have experienced many things that, that are typical for the average American. You know, I've been a single mother. I went, put myself through college as a single mother. You know, um, I've also watched my children, you know, endure racial discrimination. I have been on WIC and I've been on food stamps and Medicaid for pregnant women and children. I understand the struggles and the struggles are real for the majority of Americans. And with what's happening in Congress now, we only know that it's going to get worse. We need to have people in Congress that are going to fight for the American people, who are going to be warriors and not beholden to their donors or special interests, and who are going to be beholden to the people, the voters. Um, and, and I feel that's definitely what my, my candidacy represents. Um, and I am a grassroots candidate. I'm a Justice Democrat with, and also a brand new Congress candidate. Um, and, you know, we're really focusing my candidacy on the issues. It's always been very issue based. And um, I shared a political article about the, what uh, Ruben Kuhn is facing. Uh, and I noted in it uh, just you know a few minutes ago on Twitter, what really bothered me is that they cited uh, Kuhn's Republican uh, challenger, a Las Vegas councilman, uh, but they didn't mention you and they made it seem like no one has entered the primary, which is, you know, I don't know if they did it out of laziness or they just don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, um, what's been um, really uh, the, the response to your candidacy, uh, you know, in your district? Um, you know, how, how have you seen local media? Have they been receptive uh, to your campaign? What are some of the strategies to, to really break through where, uh, you know, QN's an establishment candidate uh, so, uh, you know, with mainstream media outlets, even local ones, uh, they tend to uh, favor those establishment candidates. So, so what are, uh, you know, what's been uh, their response and, uh, you know, what have been some of the strategies you've been working on uh, for your campaign to, to really break through uh, the media blackout that uh, progressives tend to experience? Yeah, you know, that, that is a progressive candidate. We are pushing the envelope on a lot of issues. Um, you know, overall, the support of me has been very um, strong. Um, yes, the media does know that I exist. Um, and the establishment has favored, um, you know, Ruben Kiwin. And in, in return, so is the media. Um, but, you know, to me, it's, it's more important that we've been having, I've been, you know, pushing the envelope on the issues. We've been discussing the issues because of my candidacy. And we have, you know, social media that is very, um, it's really gaining an attraction and popularity. Um, and, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of followers. Um, there is a lot of support that I've heard since I have announced, um, you know, since this whole situation, Ruben has been announced um, and people are, are beginning to be aware that there is a justice Democrat, that there is, you know, someone who is a progressive, a true progressive running in CD4. Um, and we've already been on the uh, the media that is not typical, like shows like yours and, uh, you know, not the mainstream. Um, people know me pretty well. Um, so it's just a matter of, I think, people beginning to realize that um, you know, my campaign is gaining viability by the day, every day, and it's getting more and more support. So um, we're real, we're real excited about that aspect, and that we're talking about the issues, and we haven't really strayed off of that. Um, so we're just very excited that you know, there's a lot of people um, through these unfortunate circumstances, and you know. First of all, I want to say that, you know, my heart goes out to the victims. Um, and it's unfortunate that um, there had to be a victim for this behavior to to come to the surface. Um, but through this, you know, we're we are seeing people that um, quite possibly don't need to be in office if they're not going to represent the people and they're going to abuse their power. Uh, and, and I know before you ran, Kuhn uh, was not receptive at all to uh, your push for him to support, to co-sponsor uh, Medicare for all. 
but uh, ha, you know, what has been his campaign's response uh, to your campaign? Um, will we see any debates or town halls, uh, you know, of, of that nature? Uh, you know, how has um, has he has Kuhn been uh, receptive in terms of letting democracy and the voters choose, or uh, has he been like a lot of incumbents in trying to? Uh, ignore your campaign and hoping uh, people don't pay attention to it. You know, um, he has not he has not um, has maintained his capacity to vote in a manner that is not supportive of even um, there have been numerous votes even after his uh, denial of those sponsoring or six, seven, six, that have hurt a lot of and the potential to hurt a lot of his constituents. So uh, he has stayed the course um, and continued to do, um, in my opinion, um, what's not in the best interest of his constituents and the people that counted on um, counted on him to represent. You know, I, I feel like he is really uh, insulated from his constituents and has forgotten his roots and where he's come from. Um, and I think that's easy to do when, um, you know, you're not with, with the people on a daily basis and you're in that political environment and taking, you know, your cues from Harry Reid. So, you know, that is uh, unfortunate um, that we have representatives that are, are not, keeping up with what's happening with their constituents. And um, I, I, another question I wanted to ask you is, uh, I know Nancy Pelosi and the DCC chair called on QN to resign, but uh, have there been uh, local groups within your district? What have been, uh, has this, what have uh, their responses been? Has uh, the local Democrats, have they put out a statement? Um, do you expect them to? You know, um, I know that, uh, you know, Dina Titus has said that he needs to do what's in the best interest of constituents. Some of the other representatives have called for his resignation. Um, the last I saw uh, out was that the DCCC is uh, calling for him to um, to resign. Um, there's been no word from um, Harry Reid's office or from Ruben Keevan's office on what he plans on doing. You know, and at this point, for me, um, nothing has changed in far, as far as my candidacy. Um, I'm still an issues-based candidate that I want to really push forward and get some representation for the people. You know, we have a lot of issues in Nevada that are specific to Nevadans, as well as a lot of issues that are across the nation. And we need some real representation for people in the, here in Nevada. There are a lot of families that are scared right now that they're going to be deported. We have families here that don't make enough money to provide food and the basics of, of life and necessities of life for their family. We have people here that are going to be losing their insurance and their care and the list goes on and on. We really need someone who is serious, who is not misusing their power, who is put their, you know, is concentrating on their job and their job is to serve the people. You know, sometimes they get in office and you think all of a sudden they're public celebrities. They're not a public celebrity. You are a public servant and that is your job. And that's what we need in office. We need someone who is serious about representing the people in America and making sure that our most disadvantaged, that our people at risk, people who are counting on us to do the right thing for them in representing them in Congress, that is the ultimate goal and what I'd like to see for the state of Nevada and for the United States as a whole. Uh, and Amy, uh, just my last question, is there anything else you would like people to know uh, about your campaign or um, do you have any um, you know, news or anything that you wanna plug before uh, we sign off? Well, we, we are really excited about where our campaign is. It's really been gearing up over the last couple months. We've made a lot of strides uh, we definitely are at a point where, you know, we would love to have people get involved. We're getting ready to do the door knocking and uh, our ground game. 
So please visit my website at Amy, the number four, the people.com. You know, you know, like, share, you know, help us amplify our voice um, and volunteer and donate. Um, you know, we're a grassroots campaign and we definitely need all the help that we can get. Um, and we're all in this together. This is definitely a people powered campaign and I am definitely a people powered candidate. I am here for the people. So um, also check me out on Twitter. I'm at Amy, the number four, the people. Uh, we definitely would love to hear from you. Um, we're taking, definitely enjoy getting input from people with ideas and suggestions because um, that's what it's about. It's about representing the people. Um, and, you know, we definitely could use all the help we can get. And uh, so definitely, vi you know, visit, you know, like, share, donate and volunteer. All right. Well, uh, Amy, uh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you uh, for coming on uh, and speaking with us uh, this evening. Uh, and for everyone watching, I'll post her uh, campaign website in the comments if you want to learn uh, more about her campaign. Follow her on uh, social media or donate. Uh, and, um, you know, good night, everyone. Uh, and thanks again, Amy. Thank you for having me on. No problem.